Hi, this is Naomi with Sword and Steel, and today we are going to be looking at the Army Painters 2.0 Speed Paints, the entire range from start to finish in alphabetical order so that you can easily find it in the video if you're only looking for a particular one. These are all over ivory primer, almost white and what I would normally use, pretty close to Wraith Bone if you're familiar with the Citadel range of sprays. I hope you enjoy, and if you had any questions about these, make certain to comment below. The first color is Absolution Green, a dark forest green. And remember, all of these paints were applied in a single coat. And as with all transparent paint, you need to complete the section you want to paint in a single coat without stopping, because if you let it dry before you are finished, you'll find dark lines separating the two layers of paint rather obviously. The next color is a Shide, and I found that its pink hue could be added to some of the paler browns in this range to make a rosy tint for skin, even applied over top the skin tone after it is dried to add a little pink tone as well. This color is algae green, and I agree that added over stone or statues or anything else that you'd like to add some overgrowth to, this would make a very convincing algae growth color. This color is Ancient Honey, and though it may be too bright on its own, I think, if you add it to one of the skin tones and add in a little medium, you could make a nice blonde hair color. You could also use this to give an opaque yellow some shading if allowed to pool a little in the recesses. This one is Ashen Stone, and I think it looks great for stone for statues because its recesses get so dark compared to its highlighted sections. It makes for great color for cobblestones as well, particularly if you add a couple of different colors on top for environmental aging. This is Battleship Grey, and I think if you were to use it on a battleship, I'd add some of the speed medium into the mix, so it becomes even more attracted to the cracks and crevices, and you work it up in multiple layers because you wouldn't want a patchy looking battleship. Or you could simply dry brush a pale cold grey or white over top after this first layer has dried, leaving just the crevices untouched. It does make a good shadow color for white clothing as well. This next color is Beowulf Blue, and it's simply a nice blue for any clothing or skin if you add medium that you'd like blue. I probably use it through the airbrush just as often as I would on a brush if I was looking for a deep blue like this. The next color is Blinding Light, and it was definitely designed to be a shadow for white, meant to have white dry brushed or layered on afterwards. If you want a snowy white hair, you could start with this color and maybe use one of the slightly darker grays while the blinding white is still wet to do the undersides of the hair so the colors combine and drag together, a quick form of wet blending, and I think that would look pretty natural. This is Blood Red, and I think I could have applied it more heavily since the shadows look so nice, but I'm always happy to just apply a second more focus coat after the first is dried to anywhere I want shadows, rather than applying too much accidentally the first time around. This color is Bony Matter, and yes, it would definitely work nicely for some aged stone, but if you add a little medium to it or just add a thinner coat over fabric, you can make a nice non-dyed old fabric look like I did when I was painting minis for the metallics of this range. This is Bright Red, and it's true to its name, it's a great fire engine red that would work nicely to the painting of a dying fire. Or any other bright red, really. This is Brownish Decay, and I'm sure you could find a use for it in all sorts of different places, even over atop metals to give them some age, or adding over stone or vehicles to give a rainy, muddy look. Or with a little medium, I'd apply it over a miniature's clothing or armor to give a subtle worn-down look that just as subtly brings the various colors of what they're wearing together. This is burnished red, and I think dried blood or aging bronze or copper when I see it. I could also use it as a mix to a brighter red to make even more sh of a shadow for that red if I want to give it more contrast. This is burnt moss, and I can't say I know what burnt moss would look like, but since it's a little patchier than the others, I could see it having a mossy effect. I think I'd apply this over a gray or a green to add this darker drab green look to it, rather than over the ivory or white though since it doesn't look that natural for anything alone, so gray or green underneath. This is Camo Cloak and the name suits, but again, I think I'd add this color over a pale tan or a green, since the highlights just don't quite match the shadows for this one, so I wouldn't want to use it alone. You could use it as a mix to dull down a brighter green, though, if you wanted. 
This is Caribbean Ocean and I think it's beautiful. Over white it could make a simple glow effect, particularly if you thinned it with medium and applied it in layers. It would also make a rather enchanting skin color or gemstone as well. And I think I'd quite blend it with one of the vibrant blues to make some pretty effects. This is Carmine Dragon and it's almost magenta. It would definitely make a nice shadow for a magenta. Super pretty color and I'd combine it with other colors to get an array of pinks depending on what I was looking for. Add it on top of yellow and you'd get a very vibrant red for sure. This is Charming Chartreuse and I think Orc Armor when I see it. I also see it as an over color for a green since it would make a pale green pretty vibrant while still granting that green darker shadows. It's an interesting color and I'll be playing around with it more to see what I can do with it. This is Cloudburst Blue and it reminds me of Ultramarine's Blue really. I think it would be a good shadow color when wet blending more vibrant blues or purples with it, even reds. Thin it down a lot with medium and you have a nice glaze to shadow up blues or tint silver metals to make them colder and more aged. This is Crusader Skin and I think the tones are great for a basic pale skin tone. I used it on some of the soldiers I painted the metallics onto and with little work it makes a convincing skin tone since it really likes to spread to the crevices and stay off the raised surface. You'd want to grab any pooled areas unless you wanted the crevice to look starkly dark, but that's easy with your brush. This is dark wood and I agree, it definitely looks like a wood color. It does what its name suggests. I'd also use it as a brown fur or a hair color or darkened leather. This is desolate brown and sure, it's not a brown. I could see its uses for aging anything with a little bit of algae. And through the airbrush, I think it'd look great as the armor for Death Guard. You could do that with a brush as well if you thinned it down with medium, but I think the airbrush would create a very nice even coat. This is dusk red and it reminds me of aged red leather. I think it would make a great shadow color for reds if you wanted to add more shadow to your reds, either after the red has dried or just applying this to the shadows more easily through wet blending. This one is Familiar Pink, a vibrant pink I'm sure you could find many uses for. If you ever want to mix a highlight for a dark purple, you could use this pink with the purple and one of the pale grays to make that highlight so the mix doesn't become less vibrant than the original purple color. And the highlight of purple is something a little more pink. This one is Fire Drake and I think it'd make a, a rather nice skin tone. Even as a shadow for one of the paler skin tones if you kept it to the recesses or thinned it down before applying it. It would also look nice over golds to give them some shadow. This is Fire Giant Orange and with the bright red would make a nice dying fire look to it. Particularly when applied layer by layer or over a yellow or mixed with a yellow. We haven't come to a yellow yet that would make natural fire look because their shadows are too strong so far, but there are ones in this line that would work well for that effect. This is Forest Sprite and it is so pretty. What a pretty leafy green this is for grass, for leaves. And with one of the darker greens to add shade where the sun wouldn't hit, this is a lovely vibrant green. I would definitely use this through the airbrush as well to capture that bright green. If you want it even more vibrant, use a bright yellow underneath and that would make it pop even more. This is Gilly Dew and it is too an incredibly vibrant green with really dark highlights. It reminds me of insects. This over top a bright silver metal would make quite the interesting green metallic, I think. This is Ghoul Green and its shadows are less dark than some of the other greens perhaps because they were going for something more ghostly. I'd add some medium in to make it even more ghostly as allowing more of the primer to show through would help with that effect. You could also make an interesting effect when wet blending this with the Caribbean ocean color for some magical green and turquoise effects, I think. This is Goddess Glow and I very much like this color for skin tones. The hue is great. The red in there is natural. I'd be careful with how thickly this pooled like the other skin tones, but I have used this for Sisters of Battle skin and they are looking lovely. I will show you that in a later video. This is Gravelord Grey and I think this works for dark stone very well with its tiny tint of brown to give some age to the stone. I think this would also do well to age up bright silvers. It would also make a nice aged wood look, you know, when the wood turns grey over time out in the rain for months. That's what this color kind of reminds me of. This is Grim Black and no, it isn't black with a single coat. It's a dark gray, but you can use multiple coats to make it black. So that does allow you to work up to black and leave the gray untouched as you wish. And this works nicely for things like smoke and if you want to apply it over silver metals. This next color is Gunner Camo and with a very careful brushwork or the use of sponges, you could use this camo and the paler camo cloak make a very nice camo effect on your military personnel. 
I'd also see this one looking nice over a silver metallic to make a subdued green metal look. This would also work well for wintertime trees. This color is hardened leather, and for me, it's a bit too orange, really, for my regular leather go-to color. But I do like it for a stained wood color, and it does look great on a sword sheath. This is High Lord Blue, and it's a pretty blue color. Makes for vibrant robes or a pretty shadow for your purples when wet blending. Makes a nice blue dragon hide too, I like it. This is Hive Dweller Purple, which is quite the nudge nudge towards Tyranids and Warhammer 40,000. I do like this subdued purple for that purpose, if I were painting the Tyranids in that original color scheme. And I just like it as a purple in general, and as a shadow for reds. It's a nice pretty purple. This is Holy White, and I prefer it over Blinding White for a shadow to white, since it leaves such a nice color. I'd layer or gently dry brush a white over it to add more contrast as I want it, but even left alone as it is, I think it makes a nice quick white. This is Howling Sand, and I think this too makes a nice cream color for clothing or for blondish hair. I'd also be up for adding it to a dried texture paint you primed over with ivory and then dry brushing a cream over that to make some pretty sand for your miniature's base. This is Lizard Folk Cyan, and I could easily see this on some ocean dweller as well, or as a shadow for one of the greens. It's very pretty. I'm sure I'll be using this in the future. Also through the airbrush. After that is Maggot Skin. Now I think this makes a great green to turn fresh cobblestones into aged and seldom cleaned ones, or probably on maggotkin of Nurgle creatures, which may be what it was inspired by. Then we have Magic Blue, and this is a beautiful vibrant blue, which besides being great for anything magical or biological, will also look gorgeous over a silver metal to make a blue metallic, or through the airbrush for blue glow effects. This color is Maze Yellow, and I could have put it on more thickly, but again, I think instead I'd keep this a thin coat and use one of the darker yellows or oranges to shadow it further. I'd also use this under some of the greens to make a more realistic highlight to those greens that could use yellow underneath. This is Malignant Green, and it definitely makes me think of disease and other unpleasant things. And you could also use it to turn a red or purple a little more brown, or cover a metallic with it to make it look like you get gangrene if you're cut with the blade. This is Moody Mauve, and it's a pretty shadow color for magentas and pinks. I think I would put it over a pastel pink rather than directly onto a white or ivory, unless I wanted to try a purple glow effect, which this could help with if used through the airbrush. This is very similar to Moody Mauve and is called Moon Lake Coral, and is more of a hot pink color. If thinned a little, I think over a very reflective silver metallic, it would make quite the bold pink metal color. This is a murder scene, and it is a great maroon for fabric, or dried blood, or shadowing reds. I very much like this color for the versatility I'm going to get from it. This is Mummified Grime, and much like Algae Green and Maggot Green, I think it makes for great wear and age effects on stone, or edging on washed clothing, or dulling down metals of any kind. I'm sure it'll be a useful color. This is Noble Skin, and I think perhaps with multiple layers it could make a realistic skin color, based on my study of various skin colors out there. But I don't think a single layer over an ivory or white or grey will be quite right. I think over a peachy beige, or maybe a very warm cream, it would be more realistic. You just have to add something a little red underneath, because generally speaking, people have blood flowing under their skin. This is Nuclear Sunrise, and it's an orange with speckles within it. I don't think the army painter was necessarily intending for this one to have speckles in it, but they have left it as is. I've tried their most recent batch, and it still has the speckles in it, but I don't particularly mind that. It just limits what you can do with it, I think. I'm still okay with it, though. This is Occultist Cloak, and I like it for a shadow for blue and purple, and in general for dark clothing and scales. I did notice that a couple of heavier coats in a couple of the blues, sometimes cracks, like you can see on the back of this cloak, which certainly isn't ideal, and I'm not sure why that reaction would occur. Was it because the ivory hadn't cured completely before I applied the blue? Was it because there was a lot of humidity in the air when I painted it? Was there a large temperature change as it was drying? I'm not sure. But if you apply a second coat over this first one, then the cracks should disappear. The next color is Ochre Clay, and this color really doesn't match the bottle color, as it is much more yellow. I do like the look, though. It could be a ruddy leather or a great shadow for both tinting and shadowing golds and deepening yellows. Though you may want to thin it down before doing so, since its shadows are so dark. This one is Orc Skin, and oh my 
goodness, those orcs would be seen from across the room. This is such a bright green for a skin color. I think I'd actually prefer one of the milder greens for orc skin. But it's always nice to have a vibrant green for glow effects or mixes. I'm quite content with it, even though I wouldn't actually use it for orcs. But that's just me. This is Pallid Bone, and it does make a nice aged bone color. You could easily put it on some bones and not have to do anything with it after. Or if you're looking for a more detailed, careful look, then I'd suggest thinning it down for the first coat so it's more subtle and also more pale. And then go back after the first layer has finished to add the shadows more specifically to where you want them. Now here is the first of the pastel colors, Pastel Indigo. And I wasn't at all sure how these would look, but as you can see, it's just a pretty pastel blue. Nice for flowing robes and pale blue skin. And this may look best over pure white to make it even colder looking. I do like it. This one is pastel lavender and it looks great too. Maybe for flowers or again, flowing robes or adding a little purple hue to skin or anything else you'd like to subtly turn pale purple. And I think it may also look good as a shadow for white if you add a little bit of one of the grays into it. This is pastel salmon and it's almost the hue of skin color, almost. I'm really not sure where I would use it, except as an addition to one of the skin colors to move that color towards a pale peach. I'm also curious how it would look over a soft gold since it would leave that soft orange shadow behind. This is pastel sea foam, and I could see this being used over pure white to make a glow effect easily. If you add a little medium to it, it could make a nice spirit color too. This is pastel yellow, and I don't really see it as a pastel since its shadow color is a pretty deep orange. But if you thinned it down, it would make a bright banana yellow, which would be more pastel than it is alone. But that doesn't mean I don't like it, it's a great yellow. This is peachy flesh, and though it looks quite orange on the Skaven, when you have a model painted completely with it, well, it's skin color painted with it, it's quite fitting for a lighter skin tone. Adding a little pastel salmon to the mix and you may have a nice color for anime skin, actually. I think I prefer goddess glow and crusader skin personally, but for tan skin, I think a couple layers of this one would work really well. This is periwinkle purple, and I just love this blue. So all I can say about it is that I'll be using it and enjoying it for robes, for mixing with purples and greens, for shading bright blues, and for deep gemstones and scales. It's just pretty. I also very much like plasmatic bolt. This would probably look better over white and wet blending it with pastel sea foam or Caribbean orange would be so pretty. If you used it very precisely with pastel sea foam, you could use it for the deepest part of a glowing plasma effect, I'm sure. I'll also use it through the airbrush for any time I'd like to paint a flat surface to a lovely sea green. This is poppy red and it is the most vibrant red of the bunch. It is so potent. I'd see using this for space marine eye lenses when you put down white or cream first, of course, or demonic skin. You could wet blend with murder scene or any of the deeper reds. It'll be beautiful through the airbrush as well. It's a great color. This is princess pink. And I think this is one that would look best after two layers. It's a great pink color, but I prefer the shadow color of it. So I would carefully reapply it after the first layer has dried to really make that darker color pop. And Purple Alchemy, which is my favorite pink of the colors, would also make a nice shadow color for that princess pink. I think this color over metal would be so pretty and I will be trying that in the future. I'm not sure where I'm going to find a miniature I want to paint with this just so because my sisters are not going to be pink, but maybe a Seraphon. I don't know, I have to try it, I have to try it. This is Purple Swarm, which seems like another nod to the Tyranids of Warhammer 40k, but I just see it as a great purple. I think I would possibly start with a pale pink underneath it though, rather than just apply it directly over an ivory or white, but it's lovely regardless. This is Raging Sea, and it would make a great shadow color to Plasmatic Bolt, so that's gonna happen. I think the wet bending of Pastel, Sea Foam, Plasmatic Bolt, and Raging Sea will make a superb color combination. And to shadow it, I might use one of the deeper blues as a range. I'm really excited to work with those colors more. This is Rigor Mortis, which looks like it makes a nice aged bone. You could dry brush or layer an ivory over this to make nice bleached bones or thin it a little for the first layer and come back to pick out more shadows with the second layer. It'd also be useful if you want to both lighten and reduce the vibrancy of any other color. 
This is royal robes and it's just a nice straightforward blue that is simple to use. It's good for blue skins, robes, tinting greens towards teal if you don't have one of the teals already. And because it already likes to mostly stay off the ray surfaces and collect in the crevices, you can use it for blue armor without much fuss. This is ruddy fur and I've actually found it to be a nice muted leather color instead of the hardened leather that was earlier, which I found too orange for my general use. It would also make a nice brown for hair and fur, but if you were looking for a brown leather, I do like using it for that purpose. This is runic gray, and it would be useful for shadowing silvers and coloring rock. Add just a bare highlight of pale gray with dry brushing after this is dried, and you have a simple stone effect. But for flat rocks that don't have a lot of texture, you may want to sponge off any excess since it likes to pool on flat horizontal surfaces and little dark circles that does not look natural for rock. So you just want to fix that by sponging off the excess. This is sand golem and I don't know what sand looks like this, but I do like the color anyway. I'm not sure where I would use it, possibly for a mix of wood colors and for rust effects on silver metallics. Oh, and come to think of it, the pastel sea foam would probably work well for verdigris on copper and bronze metallic. I'm happy with this color anyway, maybe also for some ginger hair and fur. This color is satchel brown and I think this is also a very nice leather brown. I didn't use it on my soldiers that I was painting with the metallics, mostly because it would have blended into their clothes too much, but I do like it and would use it for furs and wood and maybe the shadows of darker reds and boots. This is shamrock green and it is the most vibrant green of the bunch. The orc skin definitely is a close second. This could easily make a glow effect, if used with the airbrush at least. As it is here, the shadow color is too dark for that, but you could thin it down and use it then. I'd also use it for fresh plant life, probably wet blended with some of the yellow green colors like Gilly Dew or Charming Chartreuse, or just with the pure yellows of Maize Yellow and Pastel Yellow. So vibrant. This color is Slaughter Red, and boy, there are a lot of red options in this range. I do like this one as a bloody red, one that I'd splatter across the model for fresh blood effects, add some gloss medium into the mix and you could make some very fresh looking blood. This Thunderbird Blue has a lot of similarity to Raging Sea and Plasmatic Bolt, so I doubt you'd need all three of them, but I do like how well it covers while leaving only the crevices so clearly dark. It's definitely different, just very close. I think if you weren't using the airbrush, this might be the easiest one to use out of the bottle for armor and any other surface isn't quite so textured because it isn't prone to splotching. This is Tidal Wave and yes, it definitely looks similar to the other deep blues, but it does like to show off more of the primer underneath than the other blues, despite its deep color. So it may make a nice gemstone effect if you like to start with the silver underneath. And I thin it down a little further to show more of the primer off make a nice blue for skin or scales. And if you put it over white, I think it'll look very icy. So with a little dry brush or careful edge highlighting of white after that, it could make something very cold looking. This is Tyrian Navy and it does look similar to Occultist Cloak, but has a more of a deep turquoise to it. I think it would be great for robes and deep water effects. I do like it. This is Warrior Skin, which is also a nice skin color right out of the bottle. You do have to be careful with this one since the shadows are so dark and the highlights are so much brighter than the shadows that you could easily make the skin look like it's covered in mud if you let it pool too deeply. So pull away the pools with a damp brush rather quickly, unless of course you are looking for a rather muddy face effect. And lastly, before we get to the metallics, we have Zealot yellow. I think the other yellows were enough of a variety of yellows, but I do like the bright orange within this. It's easy to be too heavy handed with this since it dries a deeper orange than you'd expect when it's wet, but over white and with careful application you could make nice fiery glow effects I think, particularly when you added just a tiny touch of poppy red in a wet blend. I'll be happily trying this color out more. And now we have the metallics. So I thought I'd give these metals their best chance, so rather than applying them on a skaven like I did in the past, I applied them to the armor and weapons of these soldiers, which I've painted, besides the black trim of their base, solely using the army painter speed paints. This one is Aztec gold, a green gold color. I also used grim black on this fellow's shoes, murder scene on his padded clothing, warrior skin on his skin, purple alchemy on his flag, dark wood on the spear shaft, and bony matter on his linen coat, but in a thin coat. 
This metallic is brazen copper. I altered the color scheme a little. I instead used peachy flesh for his skin tone and his leather straps and boots are ruddy fur instead of the hardened leather I'd used on the previous fellow. Otherwise, I used the same colors for the rest of his gear. The stone at his feet was a mixture of pastel sea foam and ashen stone. This one is broadsword silver, which I decided to use on all the sword hilts and the bottoms of the sword sheaths on all of the other soldiers as well. Her skin color is crusader skin and her hair is pastel yellow that I dulled down a little with bony matter. Otherwise painted the same. All right, I decided at this point that the hardened leather looked great on the sword sheaths of the soldiers as well, so you'll see that throughout. The checkerboard tiles on her base are pastel lavender and hive dweller purple. The next color is enchanted steel, which I think might be my favorite among the silvers for its color, maybe. And I think on weapons and armor, as long as you're quite careful with how it pools on larger surfaces, it looks good. This fellow painted in about 15 minutes in total looks good, if I do say so myself. This color is glittering loot and it makes a nice sunny yellow gold. I painted this fellow with the same color scheme as the others, and the stone of his base was using Gravelord Grey that I removed any excess off with a little paper towel so it wouldn't dry with the dark pools on the stone. The aged wood was done with mummified grime and warrior skin in a kind of mottled wet blending, and just a little bit of sand golem to give a hint of rusting on the metal areas that spread through time uh, to the wood itself. This color is golden armor and his other colors are just like the others. And for the base, I used Tyrian navy for the dark blue. Well, and while that was still wet, I painted the stone in Grave Lord Grey because I kind of wanted it to wet blend without actually blending it. And then while everything was still wet, I added Gilly Dew as algae growth on all of the wet stones and kind of through the water a bit. Then I pulled some of the gray, Lord Grey off the stone so it was a lighter grey and no dark pools as usual. This colour is Horde Bronze, otherwise painted like the others, with broadsword silver on his sword, which I swiped off in a couple places just to see what that would look like. And I think I prefer to use this bronze as a shade for a metal rather than use it as a metal alone, since it seems too transparent, even after shaking it a lot to make sure it was mixed. It likely fixed itself after several coats though. This is hoplite gold and I think it might do better with a peach underneath than an ivory since it's a little more transparent as well, but it looks good on small metal weapons. And on the cobblestones, I'm not exactly certain what I used. I used various browns and grays, brownish reds to make aged cobblestones. I was just playing around with it at that point. This is polished silver and I like this color for a very quick metal since it has a broad range from pale silver down to near black in its shadow. I think it suits the metal armor nicely, though perhaps a brighter color would be better for the steel of the weapon of her sword. The cobblestones on the base, we're just using ashen stone again with a bit of Grey Lord Grey dropped here and there to make the crevices darker. And then lastly, we have Talos Bronze, which I'm actually curious what this would look like through the airbrush. It feels like it might work well for the metal of Death Guard because it's a bit motley and with some darker metal mixed in with or some, one of the other paints blotched on for various age effects. This may work well for something diseased. His sword was done in the polished silver and his base was Tyrian navy, grave or gray, and a bit of mummified grime, and I believe warrior skin to add some alternate colors. Again, each of these soldiers were painted in roughly 15 to 20 minutes. I did not spend hours on them. Besides the lady guard with her checkered floor, which took like 35 minutes or so because of the different colors needed for each of the objects on the base. Also, as I have mentioned, there are times where you want to use a medium to increase the transparency of one of the speed paints you're working with. And I don't see anything better than the Army Painter's own speed paint medium. Yes, if you have contrast medium from Citadel already, you can just use that. But if you don't, you can pick up the speed paint medium so that you can take your speed paints as far as you possibly can in their ability. I cannot tell you how many ways this medium will aid you, but I'll try. Firstly, sometimes the paint will go on more vibrantly or more darkly than you were imagining for a particular look, and the medium will fix that with a dab into the medium and a swipe across the model like I'm doing here to allow the edges of these rocks to become more pale than the Tyrian navy allows alone. Secondly, 
It works with other acrylics just fine to make them into a glaze or to thin them down further, since it clearly contains a fair amount of some form of flow improver. This is a superior product to water, believe me. Water does not follow the crevices like this does at all. Thirdly, if you want a more subtle effect when using it through the airbrush as well, you can definitely use regular airbrush thinner, that is true, but you don't need much of this medium to affect a similar outcome. And besides making them more transparent, there is no need for thinning. These bead paints go through the airbrush just fine. So get yourself some medium if you are using speed paints and you will not regret it. Remember, if you found this video useful, please give the video a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, consider becoming a patron on Patreon if you'd like to support the work on a monthly basis, or a YouTube member, or just leave me a tip for me to buy the next paint to display. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed the video. Make certain to give me a like, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, and I will catch you in the next video. Bye! My thanks to the patrons and YouTube members that have been supporting the channel. Though I did get the mega paint set from the army painter, I purchased all the rest of the other paints and the miniatures. So I really appreciate your financial support and moral support for the channel. Okay, so I just quickly put on Raging Sea, Pastel Sea Foam, Matte White. Well, started with Matte White and then used a bunch of Speed Paint Medium. And you're going to need to make it look good over multiple layers. But the colors are right there. So that's nice.